Hello artists, today we are making an abstract work of art. Abstract means it's random. There's a lot going on or a little going on, but there's nothing really specific in the picture. No objects, right? So we're gonna use shapes, lines, and color, baby color. Today I'm at the red table. So I've got my red table caddy. I don't need my scissors or glue, but I will need a pencil. I've got my red bin of markers. See the red around the label there. And I've got my red bin of crayons as well. I've got a messy mat underneath my paper. I'm ready to start. Oh, I also have a cup of Sharpies. So I'm gonna try to keep all my supplies in the middle so everybody can reach. So I might need to ask someone, hey, can you pass that down? And they will. I've got a pencil in my hand. I'm gonna write my name on the back of my paper. And now I'm going to flip it over so I have a nice clean piece of paper. So I'm going to start by making some lines. I can make straight lines, I can make wiggly lines, I can make all sorts of different types of lines. I'm going to start with a zigzag and I'm going diagonal with this zigzag. So it's diagonal means going from kind of corner to corner, right? Not up or down or left to right. I'm going it's kind of side to side. I'm going to go this way now. Right, maybe I'm gonna add some wavy lines. Ooh, this one's gonna come back this way. Whoa, crazy. The more complicated I make my lines, the more challenging this is gonna be. So maybe you wanna make some really crazy curly lines, and maybe you wanna make some really simple lines. I'm gonna just draw a couple shapes now. One of my goals is to fill up the whole paper with different designs. I'm practicing my different lines and shapes, looking for variety. Variety means a bunch of different kinds of things all together. So right now this is a line, it's a spiral, and then I'm gonna connect it, boop, back in on itself. So now it's a shape sort of like a circle with a spiral inside. All right, so I filled up my paper with all these different shapes and designs. I'm gonna put my pencil back in the container. Sometimes people will take their pencil out, they'll use it, boop, and they drop it on their paper or over on their table. No, 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 put it back when you're done so you don't have to do it later. I'm gonna grab a Sharpie, because I feel like doing a little bit of tracing, tracing. I'm gonna trace my shapes. Now with your Sharpie, um, you don't have to trace everything, but with your Sharpie, practice tracing a couple things. So I want to see where you've decided, hey, I think this spot could use a little bit more definition. So I'm going to go back with my Sharpie and trace those pencil lines. Whoops, there we go. This Sharpie's kind of running out. I'm going to grab a different one. taking my time, covering up all those pencil lines. I'm gonna trace a little bit more and then I'll be right back. Okay, I traced quite a few pieces. I noticed there were a couple spots that I kind of missed my pencil line with my Sharpie, that's okay. I'm just gonna take my eraser and go back and erase that pencil line so I don't see it anymore. This will add a really nice, crisp, clean look to your work. So if you go back and erase your pencil lines, ooh, that is some art star behavior. That's some real snazzy stuff. All right, so I've got my Sharpies away, I got my pencils away, I'm gonna move those to the side. Um, and now I'm going to start adding color, baby, color. I want different textures. So texture is the way something feels or sometimes just the way it looks but feeling is a great way to look for texture. So I'm gonna color in this circle with an orange crayon. And you'll notice that the texture of this crayon is kind of a little rough and bumpy, especially compared to this orange marker that's much smoother. So you can see and feel the texture difference between the two circles, right? This camera is so wiggly. All right, so I want you to spend some time and think about where you want all the different colors to go. 
maybe you're gonna use your marker instead of your Sharpie to trace some of your lines as well. That's totally good too. But when we're all done, every single spot on this piece of paper is gonna have some sort of design, gonna have some sort of color. This is gonna help create that abstract design by filling up that paper. And I didn't create anything with my shapes. I just went wild with it. They are all over the place. You can decide how many shapes and how many lines you want, but fill up that paper. All right, I'll come back when I'm almost done. All right, all right, all right. I think I've got most of my lines traced or colored. Now I just need to start filling in the background space. So I've got the foreground space, all the shapes, all the lines. Now I'm gonna start filling them in. I filled in the background a little bit here with some dots. I thought that looked cool. Of course, I'm a super messy artist and I've got a couple smudges here, but I'm not super worried about it because I know I can take my crayon and the crayon will just cover up any of those marker smudges so you don't really notice them. You can color with your crayons around your marker outline like I do. I love crayons because they, I can color right over um, the Sharpie and I can still see the Sharpie perfectly fine, but now I've got this whole shape filled in with color. It's really difficult to marker over your crayon, right? Because the crayon is slippery and waxy. So do your markering first and then move on to your crayons. I feel like that works even better. I'm not a super colored pencil person, but maybe you are. Maybe you really like colored pencils. You could use those too. All right, I'm gonna keep going on this. I'm trying to fill in that background. Okay, I think I'm getting close to the finish line here. I started to use another kind of purple here. This looks like purple, right? But it turned out blue, so hmm, who knows? I went with it. All right, uh, I think I've got most of the designs filled in. I'd like to add some more in this space over here. I wonder, maybe let's do some more like triangles. Well, arrows. There we go. That's pretty cool. There we go. See, so it doesn't always have to be filled in with crayon. You can add patterns inside. In fact, I hope you do. I'd love to see the different kinds of patterns you come up with. If you are struggling to find ideas or think of possible abstract designs, a couple things you can do. Miss Morocco will have some idea sheets out on the table. You can also peek over at what your neighbors are doing at your table. Let them know, hey, that's a cool idea. Or maybe you want to also do something that they're doing. Just let them know, hey, I really like that idea. Can I do it too? Would you mind? And they'll probably say, of course, go for it. Because if somebody likes your idea, that's a really nice compliment. All right, I feel like I'm pretty close to being done here. I might add some more finishing touches. When I am out of time for the day, I'm gonna double check names on the back of my artwork and I'm gonna put it in my green class basket. Everybody's got a green basket like this. They're up on the shelf. This one just happens to be the second grade basket because it has a number two on it. So I will make sure that my artwork gets in the basket and then I'm gonna clean up my supplies. I'm gonna make sure that my crayons, my pencils, my markers, all that good stuff, my messy mat goes back before I push in my chair and line up. All right, let's get to work.